Hello again guys and gals, I am Jim Bob, welcome back to the channel and welcome to the tour of Mustang Valley Ranch. So before we get started, a couple of disclaimers regarding this map. This is not your standard map. Those of you that have seen the images that I've been posting will know that it has very few fields and very large fields. Now this map has been designed by something in my shoe too, same guy who also designed American Outback for us. And this map has been designed with two things very much in mind. One, the Big Bud DLC. This map is perfect for Big Bud. Absolutely perfect. It was designed specifically with Big Bud in mind. And two, this map was also designed with a view to giving console players a taste and a chance to experience really large field farming. Something that we haven't really been able to do on uh, the existing maps to a, to a degree. I mean, there are some fields on certain maps that we've been able to combine together to make really big fields, but they pale in comparison to this map in terms of the amount of workable space. And you'll see why in just a moment. So this map is gonna be very polarizing. Some people are gonna love it. Some people are gonna hate it. You know, those that have been looking forward to trying out Really, really big field farming with Big Bud are going to absolutely love this map. Those who want uh, a variety in the style and design and layout of the farm are probably not going to like this. As I said, there are only five fields. We start with two of them, the smallest of the two. So there are only three fields that we can actually work towards in terms of progression. But they are massive fields and very expensive fields as well. And because of <coughs> excuse me, and because of the size of the fields, we're going to need a huge amount of working capital as well. So it's going to be a long progression, you know, unless you, if you, especially if you're playing on hard. Well, let's go in and take a look and see exactly what I'm talking about. So here it is. This is the map, as you can see just five fields now we start with fields three and five uh, i don't have sizes for you on those fields unfortunately but i can give you sizes and prices of the other three fields so field one on the right hand side that is 37.33 hectares it's going to cost a fraction over three million to buy that's big that's more than double or well, about double the size of the largest field currently in any of the maps, which I think is around 20 hectares on Westbridge Hills, which I think is field nine up in the top right corner. <coughs> I think that's the largest field available on any of the current maps. Then we have field two. Field two is 80.16 hectares, 80.16, huge field. It's going to cost you six and a half million to buy so very expensive as well and then we have field four now this is 104.06 hectares 100 hectares it's going to cost you 8.4 million to buy this field very very big very very expensive so very large fields now we do start with two of them as i said fields three and five Neither of them have crops growing on them. They are cultivated and empty, ready to go. No fertilizer on them. Need plowing. So it's a completely cold start. We don't have a nice cushy crop already grown, ready for us to harvest. So it's definitely going to be a grind to get started. So let's take a little wander around our farm and see what we have. So just here, where we spawn in, this is our chicken area. So we have this sort of large open field, fences around the side for our chickens. Just over here, this blue blob here, is a water pit. Now the banks on this are really steep, so uh, I wouldn't advise using this to uh, try and fill a trailer. This is here as a reservoir for this. Now this is our water tower. So you literally just pull your trailer up to the front here and you can refill your water you know, by pulling up alongside this building. You will be charged 
for the water at this point. But that's not a real issue, and you'll see why a little later on. Now, in terms of storage, we have tons of the stuff here at the farm. We have these really long aircraft carrier-style hangars, and we have 12 of them here at the farm. <laughs> so we have three here that are completely empty. Then we have this little gap, this little divider in the middle, and then we have another three. And all three of these, all six of these up this end of the farm are completely empty. And then as we head through these and down through the farm area, it's a very large area, lots of storage. We have some of these buildings here. So all of these have, you know, open sides on them. They don't have doors to worry about. There's no lighting in these either. But they do have a very distinct wooden feel to them. Yeah, you know, they're completely unlike anything that we currently have. Very unique designs. I personally actually really like the look of these. And on the other side over here, we have more. And we have some of these walls here that have these sort of slatted design here as dividers. Now these would make great crop storages as well as vehicle areas or tool areas if you wanted to use tools in here. And then over here, this is our refuel point. So as we did with American Outback, we have these large rusted out fuel tanks here and then a nice old rustic pump for refueling. We have this really long double-sided uh, double open-ended barn here. Again, great for storing equipment in. Love the look of it. And then around the back here, we have a workshop inspired area but there isn't actually an icon in here for us to uh, amend our vehicles so we can't use it as a workshop unfortunately it's purely cosmetic I might uh, message Shu and uh, see if maybe in an update we could actually get this turned into a working workshop then we have our silos here now we have these huge great big grain bins for storing our crops this is the tip point so we drop our crops off just there. And then uh, this is our unload point. This long pipe coming down here uh, drops into this box here. This is where we can retrieve our grains. And we have 800,000 litres of storage here. And we can store the regular grains. So wheat, barley, canola, corn and soybeans can all be stored in there up to 800,000 of each crop. But we can't store anything else, so no straw, no grass, silage, TMR, root crops, any of that. It's just a standard silo, just with a very large capacity. Down here, we have the other six of these aircraft hangar style storage areas. So we have three just here, and in one of them, you'll see our harvester. And we start with a good sized harvester on this map, which we're going to need given the size of those fields. The case. 7130 axial flow and we also have the accompanying 35 foot header to go with that as well now if we check out the other side the other three this is the rest of our starting equipment we don't get a lot most of it is pretty good some of it's a little bit you know pointless uh, but we have this nine meter horse pronto as our cedar so something that will cultivate seed and fertilize all in one go and has a good working width as well and to power that, we're going to need a decent tractor. So this is our one and only tractor on the map. It is the Case Puma. And this is the 240 model, which means its engine is 270 horsepower. So a good powered starting tractor. But it needs it to be that size because we need 270 horsepower to pull the, the Pronto. So as you can see, it's fitted with a front loader attachment as well. Nice and handy. This is our tipper, the Agro Liner. I think this has a 21,000 litre capacity, so not massive, but not tiny. Uh, we also have the Amazona spray kit with the uh, you know, front and back tanks. And then in here is the last pieces of our equipment. We have the smallest plow, <laughs> this tiny little Coon Varimaster. I don't think this is even two meters. I think it's only got 1.8, 1.9. Let's have a look. It's tiny. Oh, it is two meters. Yeah, tiny, tiny little plow. 
replace that immediately. You'll be here forever on this farm using a two meter plow. And we also have this horse four meter uh, cultivator as well, which we don't really need because our cedar cultivates for us. So you can sell that and straight away and not be any worse off in any way, shape or form. So that is our farm area itself. You know, not a lot of equipment. We have a good sized starting tractor, a really good sized cedar, and we have a good, decent starting sized harvester as well. Uh, so let's have a look at cell points. Now it's missing on this map, but it is on the other map, when, which you pop up while you're driving. There is actually a barn up here, and this is our cell point for straw, grass, hay, bales, all are stored up there. Uh, we have our BGA bunker just here as well. Uh, we also have a sawmill, and we do have a mill pond on this map. Then down here we have our shop, we have valley grains, we have a spinnery for selling our wool, our animal dealership, we have a large mini depot area for us to expand our farm down here. And then we have small farm down here as well, which is another sell point. And uh, on top of that, you know, it's also uh, a multi-purpose sell point. You'll see when we get there. And then last but not least, here on the east side, we have the diner, uh, which is uh, the last of our sell points. So let's head over to the shop. Now, I have already stuck a vehicle down here for us. Let's have a little wander around. So here's our vehicle interaction box. Now, my only criticism of the store is that this is out here in the open and you'll see why in a second because in here we have this lovely sort of vehicle workshop bay area with uh, big open doors that we could drive in and out of I really wish that that box was actually inside here and that uh, we could bring our vehicles in here to customize or sell or buy or whatever in here It'd be really nice but unfortunately it's outside that's my only criticism of the store you know it's a really nicely laid out store Nice, decent size. There's no name on it, so it's not like Outback with Morgan's Massive Motors. This is completely unbranded. However, there is a little uh, extra Easter egg kind of thing here for us. It does have a massive advert for the Big Bud 747. And this image you may well recognize. It's taken from the Giants fact sheets. So uh, we have that there just staring out at us from the front of the... Uh, the shop area just there so let's jump into our car I went with the Mustang simply because it's so fast and also it's Mustang Valley so it's kind of fitting to drive around in a Mustang on Mustang Valley so as we head down here we have some more of these little hangar style storage areas now these are about half the length or maybe even a third of the length of the ones that we have at the farm so a lot smaller but uh, free storage there for us. This is Valley Grains. This is the first of our sell points. And uh, like on American Outback, we have the ramp that we drive up, tip into, and then drive off again. And then around here, we also have an egg sell point as well. There are a couple on this map. And we have more of these sort of pastures that we can do what we want with. There's one just there. So again, you can mow the grass in there as is, or you can turn it into uh, a field of grass, or you can turn it into a crop field. Do whatever you want with it, basically. Over here is our spinnery. So there's our cell point for our wool. Uh, we do have nuggets, as you can see, dotted around the map. And here is our animal dealership. And this is something that I really like. I mean, they're completely static models. They're lifeless. They don't make. They don't move. They don't make any noises. But it's so nice, so nice to see animals inside the animal dealership. Now, I know on PCs, then you do tend to get sort of you know a small number of animals that do move around on on quite a few different maps. On consoles, we've never had that. So, it's nice to see. Even, if, even though they're static, it's nice to see the uh, dealership packed with animals like this. It really adds a little bit more life and, and a lot of character to the map, which is something that we've not really had before. So there is our dealership. 
Now, over here is the storage area that I mentioned, you know, the sort of free expansion to our farm. So we have this large area here with these big covered areas. Two of those for us to store equipment in. We have a fuel dump down here, fuel points for us to refuel our vehicles. We have placeable tanks for refilling seed and fertilizer. And then we have another storage area just here as well. And then either side of this area will feed into the bottom of field one as well. So a nice sort of expanded area for us to store additional equipment down here to go straight onto a field, which I think is a really nice touch. So we're going to whiz along the bottom and take a trip to Small Farm. And here it is. And again, you can see nuggets dotted around the map here. Uh, the entrance is there. So we've got, uh, I'll just point them out for you. We've got one there, one there, and one there. Three nuggets, really nice and quick and easy to find. Uh, it's not going to be a struggle to find nuggets. I'll show you a nice, quick and easy way to get your first 10. Here is our slurry cell point. Here is our grain cell point and crop cell point there's another nugget just there look and here is our manure cell point as well so we actually have dedicated cell points for slurry and manure now rather than taking everything to the biogas and another nugget as well and then over here we have yet another one of these meadows that we can do whatever we want with and here is one of our starting fields this is field three so uh, it's a pretty good size, as you can see, width-wise. It's a very long field, uh, and that is ours. We own that. It's ready to go. And here is the other one, field five. And look how long this field is. It's not the widest of fields, but we're whizzing along here at 101 miles an hour. And look how long that starting field is. That's huge. It's a massive starting field. So we're going to blast all the way up the uh, east side of the map now. We're going to head to the diner. And here we go. Here is the diner. So we have an egg cell point there at the diner and then around the back. Here's our tip point for our crops. As we uh, exit out and head further up. As I said, it's not shown on the uh, the main map, on the uh, interactive map, but on this map you can see the old red barn, which is what we're heading up to now. And this is our cell point for straw, grass, hay and bales. Just simply drive through, nice and easy. And now we come up to our animals. And this is a nice, easy way to get your nuggets as well. It's just to come up by the animals because there's loads of nuggets up, up this way. So, starting with the cows, we have a bunker for silage. We have a water trough, a feed trough, a manure pit and a slurry pit. Uh, there's a nugget just over there. Uh, here is our barn for you know, tipping in feed and also straw on the cows. I'm just going to quickly go grab that nugget so we can get to 10 and pop the rest on the map for you. And uh, over here we have slightly different star grass. So there's another nugget there, look. Uh, so we actually have this sort of you know, faded green grass in here for our cows. Uh, the sheep have the same grass texture as well. And then this is our interaction box here for our cows. So you can order directly here. And uh, we have this uh, lovely rusted gate system that we had on Outback brought across here as well for all of our animals. It's a really nice you know, uh, rustic look. I do like it. I a big fan of it on Outback. We have another nugget just here. Uh, another two nuggets just here. Jump back in the car. And uh, oh, there's another nugget just there. Look, 
So it's really easy to get your nuggets really, and there's another one right in front of us as well. So as you can see, it's really easy to get our nuggets. I'm just gonna do this on foot, because uh, there's another nugget as well. <laughs> really easy to find them up by the animals. Uh, so here's our manure point for our pigs. There is the pig enclosure itself. Now, there's been a lot of ambiguity in people questioning where do I drop straw for my antler for my pigs on some of the newer maps. It's very clearly marked out for you on this one. You've got a nice, clearly indicated tip point here for straw for where you tip your bedding. Uh, just there is, as I said, our slurry point for our pigs. This is our water trough. And then just here is our feed trough. And again, you have a nice easy access area just there. And there's our dialog box as well. So that's the pigs. Let's move on to the sheep. And again, they're all right next to each other along the top here. So here's our sheep. Another nugget just there. We have our collection point for wool. This is where our wool will spawn. And then as we head along here, we have another nugget just here. This is our water trough for our sheep. You can see again, we've got that lovely sort of uh, green texture. And there's nugget number 10. Uh, here's our feed trough for our sheep. Uh, another nugget just there. And again, our dialogue box this time for our sheep. Again, with that lovely rusted gated system there. So there's the rest of the nuggets that you can see dotted all over the map. They're all pretty easy to find. Uh, this was the reason, actually, or well, one of the reasons that... Uh, the map failed its third attempt in testing was because of these nuggets they were like american outback all stacked on top of each other in one single spot and while that one might have snuck through when giants realized that they uh, she had done it for this map as well they turned around and said no they need to be scattered so he scattered them and re-uploaded as well as fixing a couple of other issues as well now we have this large field here which is next to the bga plant now, you could do something with this field, but I need to give you fair warning that this is actually the reset point for vehicles when you reset them. They will reset to about here. So if you do turn it into a field, bear in mind you will reset stuff right onto the field. So it's something to be wary of. It might be worth just leaving this area alone and not actually developing it at all. Now, we do have water on this map as a feature. And uh, this much, much shallower, as you can see. These banks are much easier to use. The water is active water, so you can refill from, the, from there and the stream that runs all the way down the middle. And I have tested it. It is free. You do not get charged for using that water there or from the stream that runs all the way through the, uh, the middle of the map. It is completely free. And it's right next to our animals as well, which is always very handy. So we have another sort of open area here for us to develop our farm however we want to. We can put whatever we want in this area. Personally, I think I will turn this into a root crop storage area for beets and potatoes. Put lots of those uh, storage bunkers in this area. Uh, designed purely for root crops using the root crop storage mod. We have a little bit of forestry, not much, again, you know, just these small patches of trees that we can uh, work with. But we have plenty of areas that we could actually turn into uh, a forest if we wanted to. And here is our sawmill. So we have our log cell point just here. We have a mill pond just here. So you just back your logs into there and sell directly that way if you wanted to. And then just around here, we have our wood chip cell points just there as well. So a nice little uh, sawmill there. And again, you can see the, uh, the trees just extending around the corner a little bit. It's not a lot of forestry on this map. As I said, it is a pretty small area. So now we're going to head over to the BGA and I'll show you inside the BGA itself. So we'll just... Uh, 
storm along the top. Now, there are nuggets dotted either side of the road. You may see them as we whiz past, just, you know, on the sides of the road as we uh, go along. So that's another easy way to get your nuggets is just walk along that road along the top and you'll get quite a few. But for me, personally, you can see just how many are up by the animals still, despite the fact that we've already collected 10 up there. You know, the animals is probably the easiest place to go to get your, your opening 10 nuggets. So here's our BGA. It's pretty standard as usual. We have our waypoint just there. We have five bunkers. We have our digestate tank, but there is one difference. And it's just around here. Normally we have the Silo King Shredder. Now we have this Flegel unit instead. So this is what we tip our silage into this large Flegel unit up here. Let's see if we can jump on top of it. There we go. A little bit of variety, uh, a little bit of difference. Yeah, so normally we just have the, uh, the bright red and blue sort of Silo King unit. Now we have this really large Flegel Shredder instead. So there we go. That is American Outback. So I want to give you an idea as well before I go of uh, the jobs that you can do. All three of them have jobs coded on them. Now, as you can see, field one is ready to harvest. Let's see just how much money we could get for harvesting. Now, remember, this is a 37 hectare field. Okay, so we're going to get, you know, uh, standard crop. Just going to get a regular harvester. And let's see what he offers us. Using a 41-foot header, we are being given 377.42 minutes. 377 minutes. <laughs> that's a quick bit of mental maths here. That's six and that's over six hours, six and a quarter hours time allocated to us, which means it's going to take us uh, at least three to harvest this field with that particular header. And he's going to pay us a whopping 151,000 to do harvest that field for him. So to get set up, you're going to need a lot of money, but you can make it really easily I c i'm not going to say quickly because you know that's three hours worth of work there just harvesting a single field and it's not just that as well i mean you know how easy it can be to and you know raise money and gain like you know approval from a farmer by fertilizing his fields for him they're quick blink and you miss it five minute five minute missions where you'll get five to ten grand just depending on the size of the field look at field four we want to fertilize this field using this particular set setup, the modded Amazona fertilizer spreader. 253 minutes, 100,000 to fertilize that field. <laughs> these, are, these normally take like five to 10 minutes to do at the most. And you know, using the Metra spraying system here, $122,000 is what we'll get paid for fertilizing this field it's going to take over 300 minutes that's over that allocated time is over five hours which means you're probably talking at least two and a half to do the job closer to three hours just just to spray a field three hours <laughs> this is a huge huge field but it gives you an idea of how long it's going to take you to work these fields now Given how long it takes to spray using the Metra spraying system, you can understand why I said get rid of the plow, replace it. Because if you try and plow a two meter working width on the field this size, you will be here literally for days. <laughs> It'll take you an eternity to, to work this field with a two meter plow. I, I shudder to think how long it would actually take. You might even melt your system in the process of it just overheating from just constantly running a single two meter plow on this field. So there we go. That is Mustang Valley. Like I said, it's gonna be a polarizing map. Some people are gonna love this. Some people are gonna hate it. It's the Marmite effect. You know, some, some will love it, some will hate it. I can't wait to, uh, you know, get a big bud farm up and running on this map. You know, big equipment, big machinery, big fields. You know, uh, I've always wanted to be able to do this style of farming on a console. And now we finally can. Uh, as I said, this map was designed with two things in mind. One, to give console players 
a, a, an experience of really big field farming, which we haven't been able to do at all, at least nowhere near to this scale on consoles before. And two, it was designed very, very much with the Big Bud DLC in mind. You know, very large fields really put that new large equipment to work. So if you have the Big Bud DLC, I highly recommend you try this map out. If you don't have the DLC, then you're gonna you might still enjoy this map, but it's gonna take you even longer to work these fields without access to some of that really large equipment. So there we go. As I said, I'm going to be doing a big bud farm on this. I'll probably actually do a YouTube series on this farm as well. It'll probably take me half a dozen episodes just to spray a field. <laughs> we'll see. It'll be a very he heavily edited series, I think, as opposed to my normal just record plug and play style. Uh, but I will definitely do a big bud farm on this. And uh, it'll be an interesting one. It'll certainly be a very interesting experience. Oh, one last thing before I go as well. If you haven't already seen my Big Bud DLC review video, please do go watch it. It uh, shows you all of the equipment in operation. It shows you comparison tests between the original largest equipment to the new largest equipment. Uh, it shows you a capacity test on uh, a couple of pieces of equipment as well. And shows you some of the ways you can actually hook some of the equipment up in different combinations. Uh, I do highly recommend you watch it. So, uh, yes, thanks for watching. I am Jim Bob, and I will catch you back on the farm very soon. <laughs>